Welcome, and today we're going to look at some old historical America, and we're going to look at some super advanced tech, and a few other things. I hope you enjoy. And here I'd like to start at the top of this building, and this is a very impressive building, or structure with no windows perfect smooth block work and here looking very interesting and what is this building or structure this is a monument in Washington DC this is the Washington Monument and this is apparently what the monument was supposed to look like the base of the Pantheon is 250 feet in diameter a height of a hundred feet and the height of the obelisk at present is 550 feet seeming just very overkill. They began planning this in the early 1800s and even here in the background I mean this was the proposed design the narrative tells us. Simply the proposal and they tell us they did away with all of this as it was too costly they could only afford to build a 550 foot monument and what of all this in the background seeming very much like some type of capturing of the moment of the actual moment the Washington Monument is an obelisk on the National Mall in Washington DC Built to commemorate George Washington, the monument is made of marble and granite and blue stone nace. And here's a little look at this type of stone, if it really is this type of stone, looking, looking very much like a melted stone. Construction of the monument began in 1848 and was halted due to the lack of funds and the American Civil War. The structure was completed in 1884. It is the tallest monumental column in the world. It was the tallest structure in the world from 1884 to 1889 when it was overtaken by the Eiffel Tower in Paris. And the story goes on to tell us that they had a contest like many of these and very interesting even when we see it in present times we see all these flags in a circle and is that on an older footprint now they tell us the tower has a foundation 30 feet underground and when we look at this old picture and there are very few pictures this does not look like a new construction site. You know, you're gonna build all this, including this little Greco-Roman flare here. Just pure precision. All the way up to here. And what, you're gonna have these little wooden stairs here? No. Doesn't seem to be at all in some initial construction phases and this this is nothing this is completely not real I'm just not sure but you know really you're not building a structure of this magnitude with any of this junk up here and this clearly looks edited and again this is one of the only pictures and just amazing you know people 
you'll see a picture like this and say, aha, construction, there it is. Now, this is so strange. Anyway, I saw this picture for a long time and said, oh, okay, I don't know, but today, today is the day we're zooming in. And what is this? This is false, is what it is. This is not the construction photo. And this foundation, even these structures around here, I mean, really nothing making sense. Although we do seem to have a pretty glorious building in the background here, with a dome. Looks like another dome. And it is Washington. But again, look at these buildings. And this person. This is what we can expect of these times. Even these buildings aren't even constructed well. Uh, they're leaning so bad they're using boards to hold them up. They can't even build a nice wooden building. And then we're to believe that they're throwing up something like this. And this thing already looks old. Look, it's cracked up here. It looks boarded up. This is some makeshift wooden door that someone's thrown on here. And everything here just makeshift. And again, you know, the houses. Okay, these are looking a little nicer, but still. This is what we would expect of this time period. Abraham Lincoln was born in a log cabin. And then this, to glorify George Washington in the middle of the Civil War. And even without the Civil War, just for the time period and the excess. Although the stone structure was completed in 1884, internal iron work, the knoll, and other finishing touches were not completed until 1888. A difference in shading of the marble, visible approximately 150 feet up, shows where construction was halted and later resumed with marble from a different source. The Washington Monument is a hollow Egyptian-style stone obelisk with a 500-foot tall column. Its walls are 15 feet thick at its base and one and a half feet thick at the top. And here another little look at the picture that we saw. The partially completed monument, photographed by Matthew Brady, 1860. Just an amazing picture, as we saw. Really allows us to zoom in nicely. And yet, so few pictures. Construction resumed in 1879 under the direction of Lieutenant Colonel Thomas Lincoln Casey of the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. Really, this Army Corps of Engineers has given a lot of credit for, I think, a lot more than any Army Corps of Engineers. 37,000 civilians and military personnel could have created. Okay, it's one thing to have 37,000 people, even if that was so, but all of skill? And here, an idea of the means that people were building with these little pulley systems and just very primitive. And even this picture looks ridiculous. Who could believe such things? And an amazing picture of it here. And all kinds of antiquitech right here next to it. In 1884. So really, I mean, this here's 1884. I mean, we're not getting many pictures before this. And just seeming as if that other photo that we were looking at, this one, especially when we look closely, has simply been cut off. And they took full advantage of this one. And just amazing, even in 1884, what we're seeing just on this railing. And I was not aware of just how massive this Washington 
memorial is. And when we're speaking of the old world, it is the tallest building in the world. And here we see it in the back. And number 78 at 555 feet. And I just find it perfectly fitting that it should be lumped in with all of these other buildings that are typically given a much older age, including what would be the pyramids, it seems, back here. And here is the Asinelli Tower in Bologna. And just remarkable. I mean, here is your old world. Here is a just beautiful showcase of the old world and how it's much more amazing than anything that we're doing today. Look at this. Really beautiful picture provided by the wiki page. And I'd like to study this a little more. And just to be certain, let's have a closer look at some of these construction photos. So this not seeming at all like the same structure. This not seeming like the same structure either. Again, a crew and the materials that do not seem capable of building something like this. Even partially. Maybe only things like this. And how about this one? A seldom seen picture. I'm not sure if this is a person. And a lot of burning. These are definitely scorch marks. I'm not sure from what. And really nothing. Nothing at all of what is seen today. And really this reminding me of some of the photos that I showed of the base of the Salt Lake City Temple. And really the same clean construction and block work and just something massive. Again, it's one thing to build a monument, but to build all of this and then bury it back with dirt. Truly remarkable and perhaps unbelievable. Let's see what else they give us. And here a photo from StolenHistory.org who puts out an excellent website. And what is he showing us? A very amazing picture. And again, we're reminded from all the buildings surrounding it what our people are really capable of at this time. And this looks like the nation's capital back here. And just amazing, the build out of the whole city and way beyond the means of a wood building horse for transportation people. And really, when we look at this picture, it actually resembles more of what we might have seen here. And perhaps demolishing everything around it leaving this massive hole and just a big mess and again we were able to take photographs much earlier than this there's no reason to not have any photos of anything lower than this portion always the same portion and here a little depiction of this hollow obelisk and perhaps one of the greatest pieces of antiquitech left over from the old world. And here an apparent photo of setting the capstone. And again a rendering. Or was it really a rendering? I mean, this is some imagination and really making more sense of what was actually depicted 
when it was first seen, and later we're told that this was merely his vision and there was not enough funding to build this part around it, but there was enough funding to build at least half of it. Very interesting. And in this part, I wanted to share a possible scenario for a mud flood. And in one of my prior videos, we examined a volcano in Mexico that seems to have buried a village or two with 30 feet of ash. And the result, to this day, appears as if it was covered with earth and completely submerged buildings. And in this very recent past, only a year or so ago, there was a great earthquake in Indonesia and from satellite or airplane, it wouldn't have to be satellite, but they tell us satellite, we see what appears to be an absolute mud flood without the water, although waters end up mixing with rivers and lakes and it just becomes a big mess, but all caused by a earthquake. First an earthquake and completely liquefying this whole region. And even this cornfield here, they say was actually located several miles away and it, the whole earth just moved and the corn appears to be just fine amazing to see the land shifting in this way and here we can see a house just sliding along just flowing like it's on a river and this is not even a very steep grade I mean as you can see in the photos this is seemingly pretty level ground and yet having just enough of a grade to wash away villages in moments, completely displacing thousands upon thousands of people. And now this is a small example, and as we can see here, this is massive if you're in the middle of it. Just a complete river, the earth set in motion. And again, this is on a small scale. And this region being in what we call the Ring of Fire. But whatever force from underneath causes this, on what scale can this occur? And has this happened plain wide? As we do seem to see evidence of what we call, for the lack of a better term, mud flood all throughout our realm. And let's have one more look at this flow, at this flowing of land that had nothing to do with water or volcanoes or anything from above, as far as we can tell. Now in this next segment, I wanted to revisit what in old Indian text were called Vimanas and what I have personally seen on dozens of occasions. And often, it is something that we don't really want to talk about. And even in retrospection, to our own experience, is a very questionable topic and very difficult to share. And in this particular case, it's easier for me to share these images that I've recently seen. All very recent images. And this video has been shared by several channels what appears to be a jet flying, leaving its contrail, and yet when zoomed in with probably what is a type of P900 super zoom camera, we see the same thing that we see with stars, a flickering and flashing, and anyone who has a telescope and has zoomed in on stars has seen nothing but this what we could compare to a cymatic pattern and in this particular case for the first time seeming to have a agenda and posing as something that many would think is a completely normal and natural phenomenon 
and yet when zoomed in we see no airplane. And recently I was staring at the stars one evening, and I asked to myself, what are the stars? And suddenly one of these beautiful orbs of light flew right over my head and continued north until it fixed itself in the sky in a set position and sat there. And if I had not seen it fly right over my head and park itself in this position in the sky, I may have thought that it was just a star. And yet this happened when I was asking and this indicated to me that whatever I saw was intelligent and was responding to my question and showing me something. And now if I would just have told that story without any kind of visuals, it might seem a little crazy, but recently these photos, along with a beautiful piece of footage from Colombia in South America, showing these fleets of craft and exactly what I saw fly over my head and park itself in the sky, and here are entire fleets of them. And why do I bring this up? Because we are studying and investigating our ancient past, and we find buildings that we can't replicate today, and we don't, and we barely understand their functions, only now realizing that there is a function beyond what we're told, as far as more than just a building. And so when I see things flying in my backyard, I have to question, are these remnants of an ancient people that are still existing today? And I think at this point we realize that our past has been covered up, and we are finding clues of this in all aspects. And I simply offer this as a puzzle piece. Perhaps a puzzle piece that will find its place down the road. But when we realize that we don't know, we have to consider everything. And whereas this is not speculation, but something that I have experienced on so many occasions, after seeing these videos today, I thought I would share them at the end. And that's it for today. I do hope you enjoyed, and have a blessed day. Please like, comment, and subscribe.